Hello, welcome to the Season 4 NFL Outback Series Race Number 14 here at Bermuda. We're here for the first time ever at this track. Basically, it is the Bermuda Triangle where they're at. Amazingly how they got there, I don't know, they never know. But, uh, on the pole is Joshua Collard. Star next to him is Jeff James. Third, Johnny Gardner. Fourth, Clay Rogers. Fifth, Jessica Shelton. Sixth, Awesome Weiner. Seventh, Awesome Mongol. Eighth, Keith Batson. Ninth, Zachary Chambers. Clean the top ten is Matt Dalio. And you're stressed if you're starting lineup for tonight's race here at Bermuda. On the final row, we have Joseph Manesto and Alan Cavagnaro. Now, this track is very simple. Bermuda, it's a it's a triangle. But um, it's a very unique track, though, because not only is it, is it, like, near an island and stuff, but it's very, very weirdly shaped. It's kind of like Pocono, but, like, bigger and uh, possibly better and stuff. More speedway speed, more super speedway speeds and all that. Um... Technically, when I look down here, it is a super speedway, but from the looks of it, how it is by the size, it looks like a speedway and all that. But then again, I could be wrong, so, yeah. Um, our previous race winner from the last race was the 14 of Chris Levere. If you notice where he's starting, he's starting toward midfield, and that's about, hmm, I'd say like top 20s or something. Something like that. Let's see, wait. No. Well, yeah, I'd have to say so. Somewhere around there. Maybe 22nd. But um, anyway, as we move ourselves back up to the front of the field, and they just gave the command. Joshua Collard, ever since his win at Hogzilly, really hasn't had a lot of success. Um, you know, the one win at Hogzilly, he had okay run at Breaky. He really pissed a lot of people off at... Um, at uh, Hartley Pool, and then well after that just went downhill. No apparent reason it says that there's five, there's a fifth turn. I don't know why, but whatever then. Hey, Scar dives down pit road, and there's actually six turns on here. Okay, I guess. Mm -mm. No, the fair triangle. You think three turns, but then again, uh, welcome Bermuda. Uh, here we go. Green flag is out here, Bermuda. Now, like we mentioned before, only I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, this is the only time that the, this is the this is the racetrack that the Outback Series will take part of. The Cup Series will take place over at Kentucky. So, just want to let you guys know that Josh McCollar gets out to a good start right there. Now Johnny Gardner's going to go to the inside for the lead. We're probably going to be using the spectator mode because that's got. You know, the best camera angles from what we know of. And Johnny Gardner is going to go to the inside for the lead. Probably see double file, maybe trip, maybe three wide. So far, so good, though. That's at least a good thing. Looking through, everything's looking all right. And leading Lapner one is going to be Johnny Gardner. Now here comes Jessica Shelton for second over good friend Joshua Collard. About Austin Mongold in the 21, trying to get third from Collard. Mongold hasn't made a lot of noise. Only noise he's made so far was the Atlanta race, and he won that race. But really hasn't been the big person to talk about as much on trying to get, like, the good runs and all that. But uh, Mongold, though, looking very, very well at it, you haul Ford Mustang. Solid run for him. There's Zachary Chambers in the six. Really hasn't had the best seasons. Also, will turn around here. And Mason Power is already coming up to the front as well. No surprise on that. So we see Chevrolet Camaro. And DJ Curtis in the 33. Working his way up as well. And here comes... Oh, we had a little bit of three wide. Hudson nearly hogging the apron. There's some three wide action. James Qualls, Kyle Matthews, and our previous race winner, Chris Levere, is in that three wide mix. Uh, if they go four wide, safe to say it will be a wreck it up moment. But uh, Louvier getting a run on the high line. 
this is interesting about this track. The track can have have it play at both sides of uh, using the low line as an advantage and a high line. Basically, if you don't have any draft in the low, then, well, the high line will prevail. Speaking of which, Jessica Shelton to the inside for the lead as the Napa Chevrolet Camaro. Car number nine. Behind her, car number six, Zachary Chambers. This is good for Chambers, really needing good runs like this. The three wide for position. That is where Hudson is at currently right now. DJ Curtis is in the middle and Jeff James up in the high line. Check it through the back. Cody Lamas is back here. Soon Benjamin Miles, Caleb Harris, Henry Sanfer, Steve Pollard, Alan Cavagnaro, Brody Talley, Stephen Pollard the third, which ironically enough, the Pollards did really well last race. Chris Washer, Justin Vanesto who started yet at the back of the field. Ash Curtis, Charles Jackson. Kyle Matthews fell back as well. There's Louvier in the 14. There's a three wide right there. And we're starting to see the three wide formation really be in effect. But the top three remains single file right now. And Justin Talapas really dived in for that three wide move. He's going to really get some spots right there. This is that 18 uh, Turtle Beach game stop Toyota Camry. Good run for him. Pole sitter jo uh, Joshua Collard. He's starting to go on the outside and fall back. The outside pole sitter Gardner is right now in the sixth position. Now under fire from Nathan Hudson. Actually, yeah, he is in six. I was like, what in the world? Seth Cole get a good run. PS3 Hershey's Last of Us, uh, Last of Us Toyota Camry. Good run right now. As he's currently at the time 8th. Remy Fisher is the last car in the top 10. Keith Batson getting 12th spot from Joshua Collard right there. And uh, the Brits are battling each other for the 13th position. Sean Galligan in the full center Joshua Collard. Collard though is going to get the draft. Galligan really has not had the best of seasons. That guy cannot catch a break whatsoever. And he will, though, get the spot from Joshua Collard. Three wide now for position, and it looks like uh, Ramey Fisher and Jordan Culp are really going to get the advantage, as well as Keith Batson under fire for the lead. How about the champion, Justin Talapas, getting the lead? Talapas has got the lead from Jessica Shelton, and Talapas is going to lead that lap. Now here comes Gardner and Cole and Fisher. Well, Greg Jones running uh, pretty solid right now. Just cracking the top 10. Is the one main financial Toyota Camry. And the high line, on the high line is Powers and the middle line is Mongold. Gardner, though, still leading. But everyone else is uh, running A-OK -okay for right now. Louvier is really in the back, though. Walls has been in some three-wide situations for the past three, four laps. Is the Johanna Long Four Travel Chevrolet Camaro? Been in a lot of them. The lucky thing though, he's been on the inside line most of the time though when that happens. Seth Cole's going to now take the lead as he led that lap over Johnny Gardner. Now Fisher to second, Culp to third from Gardner. Well, it looks like he will. And look at that. Batson's working his way up as well. He really hasn't had a lot of luck ever since being in the NRSL. Has that 38 Harley Davidson uh, Ford Mustang. Not done well in this series. He hasn't done that well in the Cup series. But uh, as of late, though, he's been doing very, much better in the Cup. Not as much in here, though. Batson will try to turn it around, though. There's Ford in the 3 and Momo Kari in the 42. Ari trying to get some uh, good run going as well as Ford. And a three wide. Nope. Uh oh, I thought they were going to go three wide, but then again, they are not going to. Fisher, our Talladega winner, trying to go two wins in the last three races. That would be big. Two wins in three races. He won at Talladega two races ago. Didn't have much of a run at uh, Armory Digital, and now here he is at. Uh, Bermuda trying to get win number two of the season. End of his career for uh, 
Henry Cell and for Outback. So Jordan Culp is going to take the lead. Now Batson and Galligan, they're coming. As this race is being a little bit of a snooze fest, but at least they're not being in a wreck it up mode. That's at least a funny thing. And look at Joseph Vanesta in the 23, worked his way up. He was starting the back of the field, and he's working his way up, and that's a good run for that Top Match Designs Dodge Challenger. Like we mentioned before when we were in the Outback races, that this is the only Dodge that's in this field, so very good there. As we got a third of the race completed, Jordan Culp is your leader. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Batson in second. Now he's going to take the lead, and Galligan's going to get get to the low line. So, while Batson and Galligan are going to hold on for the top two spots, uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and don't go away. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You haven't missed much. Sean Galligan is the leader. So, we're on lap 12.30, heading into turn number five right there, I believe that is. And, yes, it is indeed. Greg Jones has cracked second, third, Qualls. Fourth is under fire. Plord's going to get it. And I made a mistake. That was turn three at that time. They passed turn four. And now they're approaching turn number five. Now Jones is going to take the lead away. A little bit of TV time for Galvin. Let's go aboard one of the drivers here for this track. Let's go on board with Joe Spinesto and that Dodge Challenger on board. Take a full lap around this track. Track being unique with sponsorship of Doritos and, um, and a Sunoco. But showing you what it's like in the Top Notch Designs uh, Dodge Challenger here with this track. Track is unique. Big time sponsorship. Doritos might I add. But really, it's kind of like Pocono, but with a uh, much higher speed. Right now, as you can see, coming into the turn, he's going about 178. And let's see how, how fast he's going to go before getting into turn number 5. He's going about 184 before he hits the turn. So, interesting there for that car. It's actually gaining more speed right now. Just a little bit, but that's a lap around Bermuda, and I believe he's going to go 180-89, and then hits the turn, so very interesting there. And I apologize that this track does not have the best of views. Like, look, you get this view, I mean, yeah, this is good, and then you go to TV2, and it's just meh. You'll get a few good ones, and then you'll get, like, a lot of shit ones. Press the board under fire from the second position from Devin Becker in the 20. So teammates are 1-2 right now. Good run right there. Now here comes Akari in the 42. Can't make the move for the lead. And now Becker to the lead as we're halfway into the race. At least a good thing for these drivers because it's because they're not wrecking it up so much for no cautions and all that. You know, it provides some good racing and all that. Plus, also they don't have to stack up into each other, which has been one of the problems as of late with these uh, drivers that they. Tend to stack up toward the end. There's a three wide right there. Skirvin, Seth Bull, Jessica Shelton. Right behind him, Onesto, Hudson, and Talapass. Collar just really fell back and hasn't made a lot of strides back up to the front yet. Louvier's starting to work his way back up to the front. Kevin Naro has been stuck in the back, as well as Henry Sanford. And Jeff James, wow. And I made a mistake, Jeff James was the outside pole center. Johnny Gardner started third in that race. Let's go on board with one of the drivers here up in the front of the field. Let's go on board with Mr. Mayonnaise, Charles Jackson, and the Chevy Camaro, the flex steel car. Let's show you what it's like on board this car right here, the Jeffrey Earnhardt car. We'll take you a full lap around this track and see how Jackson will do. He's going to make an inside move on the 16 right here. 
And he's reeling in that Chevy Camaro right in front of him, the target one, the Vicari. Turn one, it's turn one and two. Looks like he loses just a little bit of speed, but that's just normal with this track. About 186 before heading into this turn. Oh, he had a brake check right there from Akari. Track is unique, like I mentioned, but looks like Jackson's going to get peaked up high. Kyle Matthews going for the second position. Actually, uh, Austin Talley did. That's a lap around Bermuda. See, probably the third got around him. Wow, that 52 run very, very well. Austin is having his brother Brody also coming right behind as well. The tallies are separated by Pollard the third in the 52. So it's a brother sandwich, and then the meat in the middle is Pollard the third. The tallies, they do love working together, even if they're not like right there from each other. They'll be they'll be right there though, don't worry. I guarantee you brother brother Brewery's gonna be catching up to uh, brother Austin pretty soon. Once he makes that move on Pollard the third, Austin's really gonna go for that lead. And Momokar is gonna lead another lap here at Bermuda, but instead Pollard the third, he's gonna make the move to the inside of Austin. And now cars number five, seven, and nine. Are right there. How funny is that right there? And Brother Brody going to pass Brother Austin. Are the third. Racing well after that good run that him and Steve Pollard had. Armory Digital. Now Brother Brody says, well, you put my brother up high. Now I'm going to put you up high. But all this is helping is that guy right there, Momo Akari, and that uh, Target Ticket Chevrolet Camaro, the the uh, Kyle Larson machine. Now Brody's going to go for the lead. And finally, a battle for the lead taking place. I believe Akari led uh, three laps so far. And Brody's going to complete the pass. Shelton is coming. And look who is fourth on that inside line, Just Finesto. Now fifth. A solid night for him and that Dodge Challenger. How would it be for that Dodge to win? Been close many times last season, and close a few times this season. It'd be a big deal for him. He's not had the best of luck in the series, as well as in the Cup Series. He's having worse luck in Cup. Sean Galligan, Nathan Hudson working together right there. I've talked to Sean lately, and um, the funny thing is that he doesn't do well with the white car. He normally likes to drive the black cars, and he normally has some good luck, like what Jordan Culp would be running right now. But Galligan is making his point well known. When it's in the white car right there, he really hasn't had a lot of good good runs and all that. He's been in a lot of wrecks, and this is the one guy that really cannot catch a break whatsoever. And I'm surprised he's not dead last in points, but... He's actually had some good runs where he could not be dead last, so that's at least a good thing right there. Onesto, he flipped at Chicagoland. That was another reason of his bad luck, and man, he'd really like to change it. He's doing it right now. Brother Brody, though, is hanging on for a few laps, trying to hold off Jordan Culp, and Chevys are 1-2 right now. Got a Ford in fourth, a Dodge in third, and Chevys are in the next three spots. And then, uh, well, they were. And is that me? Or am I seeing Chris Louvier? And that is Chris Louvier in that Toyota. Finally, we're seeing Toyota get up here. Toyota hasn't made a bunch of statements uh, tonight. We're going to watch Benjamin Miles. And if Brody can win, this would be huge. Another first time winner of the season. Here comes Cole. And here comes Onesto and Sean Galligan. They're all coming. Freight train in that Kleenex Chevrolet Camaro. Brody's scheme is a... Uh, oh, as Hudson di dive below his uh, fellow Brit Galligan, they're going to put Brody 3 wide. 
I was going to say the Brody scheme was a throwback of a 2002 paint scheme that was ran, I believe. I believe it was 2002, and uh, my memory comes to you correctly. Yes, it was. Of uh, the Kleenex car, I believe that Randy LaJoy drove drove at that time. Very nice scheme. Austin, his brother, is running the retro scheme that Kyle Busch ran when he was in the Busch series. The laps are winding down. Hudson going for the lead. Ernesto trying to take second. Galligan kicked up high. Was not the best thing that happened to him. Chris Washer's working his way up, and here comes the pole sitter, Collard. But he's going to get put to the middle. And wow, Curtis with a move going from high to low. Good move right there. And Hudson still holding off Onesto and Benjamin Miles right now. Onesto has closed the gap on that two car. Go through the back one more time. High Naughton is dead last right now. And man, Matt Dalio and... and uh, Wow, Penske really not having good runs whatsoever. They are having miserable runs. Batson, Powers, Cavagnaro. Gardner, Mongold. Harris, some of these guys, man, they are really falling back. Henry Sanford finally caught something. He's going up there. And new leader, the Dodge Challenger of Joseph Anesso. Bringing along Chris Louvier and DJ Curtis. If Louvier wins, safe to say he will be in the chase with those two wins no matter where he's at. But remember, this is race 13. After this, we have one more race. Then the All-Star Weekend comes. And then after that, from race 15 on to race 20 are the last races of the regular season. And then the LCQ comes and then our chase is set. So these drivers, you know... I don't blame them. It's their go time move. And if you get a win, got a good chance for that uh, wild card spot. And it's lagging. I don't know why. So we're going to take a quick commercial break for the, so this lag can get out. The leader right now is Joseph Ness. Welcome back. You have not missed much. As I had to get the lag out of the way. But Onesto still leads. Louviera, our previous race winner, is in second. And a battle for third between. DJ Curtis, a Chris Washer. Good run for the 77. That's well needed. He has had a miserable season. Angel Navarro's working his way up to the front. And Washer wants more. He wants to get that second position. This is where the inside line really gets a good run. He's going to get it. And Josh McCollard, our pole sitter. He's coming back. Qualls is coming. Zachary Chambers. Jeff James. Ash Curtis. Who is doing better than his brother DJ. Pollard the third, Henry Samper. They're getting good runs. But Onesto, still the leader. Navarro got second. Collar trying to get a run. And Navarro now going for the lead. On the 23 top notch designs Dodge Challenger. Navarro to the lead. Three laps to go in display for the Angie's List Toyota Camry. Last time that car went to victory lane was last season in California under Devin Becker. Where is the 20 of Becker anyway? I don't know if he's up on the inside or something. And he is, but he's in the back of the field on the inside line. Capard C, I'd have to say, probably could be Pollard the third. In that 52, the way how these guys are racing, they're three wide at points right now. They're, they're, I would not be surprised if Pollard III would get this win. And three wide for the lead. Zachary Chambers to the lead. Look at Jeff James coming as well. Ash Curtis, Brody Tally. They're all coming. And Zachary Chambers barely leads over Joshua Collar. Man, that's also been a guy who's having a miserable season is that guy right there. So Trevor Bain car. Here comes the Kyle Busch car, Jeff James. Inside for the lead. And he's peeking, he's going to go in. Look at Henry cracking the top 10. That's 76 and needed this run. He's been he's been having a roller coaster season. We'll have good runs, we'll have bad runs, and in between. 
but I don't blame him. He's making a good move to go up to the front. But the best one right now possibly could be Brody, unless Paul III can prove me wrong. White flag displayed for Jeff James in the 54. Oh, this is where the inside line really gets a good run, but Jeff James shuts the door. Good move by the 54, James. That car last won at Indianapolis last season. Under Preston Floor. Floor, as you can, as you can tell, really not having the best of runs. He is currently right now towards the back of the field, I believe, unless I passed him. He's 32nd right now. Two more turns to go. Ash Curtis trying to get the lead. Here he goes to the inside for the lead. Curtis to the inside. Brody goes back to the inside, but off the final corner. Ash Curtis in the 84. Younger brother DJ is going to come off the final turn. He's going to win here at Bermuda. Congratulations to Ash Curtis on the victory. Solid, solid night for him. And now another first-time winner this season. Curtis got the win. Jeff James second. Brody Talley third. Steve Pollard third. Fourth. Zachary Chambers fifth. Henry Sanford got sixth. Joshua Collar at pole center and up seven. McIntyre eighth. Navarro ninth. And Louvier complete the top ten. As we will get you your full results right here. And there you can see Qualls, Jackson, Pollard, DJ Curtis, Cavagnaro, Mongold, Fisher, Chris Washer, Weiner, Onesto, Hudson, Galligan, Jordan Culp, Powers, Miles, Naughton, Shelton, Austin, Talley, Gardner, Lamas, Akari, Plord, Batson, Jones, Rogers, Cole, Becker, Talapass, Dalio, Matthew, Skirvin, and Paris completes the field. No cautions in the three laps, but I'm not bad of a race. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this race, be sure to give it a like, comment, with your thoughts on this race. Subscribe to be a part of the NRSL. We will see you guys for round number 13 for the Cup Series here at Kentucky. And then we will go to round number 14 uh, at a... Or, what the hell am I saying? I'm thinking back to 13. And then after that, we will see you for the final um, race for the Cup Series to see who's going to make the All-Star race. So, Ash Curtis, he punched his ticket into the All-Star race. So, I made a big fail on that part. I said that was race 13. My apologies this whole time. This was race 14. So, Ash Curtis got the final spot to get in. We will see who else will get into the All-Star race via win from last season after after uh, from uh, race 15 of last season to this race right here and champions and and uh, and all that. So thank you guys for watching. We're at one last time Ash Curtis victory. We will see you. We'll see you for the next for the for the Cup race Kentucky and then All-Star race weekend. Until then, goodbye everybody.